hi guys welcome back to my youtube channel my name is tessie and today we are going to be recreating this style when i saw this style on choma good hair i fell in love with it and i decided to make one for myself if you're new to the channel you're welcome if you're here to subscribe kindly do that and let's get right into the video so guys to make it easier i'm going to be working with the pattern paper which i folded into two so we are cutting the front so from the waist i came down to the hip line so the hip line is 9 inches, which I connected it into a straight line. Then I indicated this as my waist line. Then this as my hip line. So what I'll be doing next is from the hip, I'm going to come down to like 5 inches. So from your hip line, come down to 4 or 5 inches. I'll be using 5 inches for mine. I chalked 5 inches and connected it into a straight line. So I'll label this line as my skirt length for now. So what I'll do next is at the waistline, I'll divide my waist measurement divided by 4. I'll chalk it down. And then I'll be adding extra 2 inches for my sewing allowance. On the hip line, I'll place my hip measurement divided by 4. And I'll also add 2 inches for my sewing allowance. Then I'll be connecting from the waist to the hip. So I'll use my curve ruler to do that. Then from the hip, I'll connect to the skirt length. So I'll just connect it all the way down to the skirt length. After doing that, I'll go ahead now to cut out my pattern. So guys, pay attention to this part. From the waist, you come down to 5 inches or 6 inches depending on how deep you want this area to be so for me i'm going to be working with six inches so from the waist i came down to six inches which i chalked down there then at the down part of the skirt i'm going to come in on that folded area by six inches as well so i came in by six inches so what i'll be doing next is connecting my points together so I'm going to connect the point together. You can use your curve ruler or your free hand, anyone that works for you. So I'm just using my free hand to connect the curves. So after doing that, what I'll be doing next is from this point, I'm going to connect it to the hip line. So from the hip line, I'm just connecting it all the way down to that six inches line we have there. So guys, this is what the skirt looks like. As you can see, we're good to go. I'll go ahead now to cut out my pattern. If you do not understand, just rewatch the video. So guys, please take note of your hip line. So this is my hip line. If you open the pattern, it should look like this, as you can see. And at that point, I have my hip line. So that's where the gathers will start from. So for the back, I folded my pattern into two. Then I'm going to be chalking my zip allowance, which I'm using 2 inches. So I'm chalking 2 inches all the way down. After doing that, I'm going to connect it into a straight line. Then I will label this as my zip allowance. After doing that, I'll place the front on the back after the zip allowance. Then I'll pin it down to hold it in place. After doing that, I'm just going to connect from that zip allowance. I'm going to trace it all the way down. So go ahead, trace your line. So the only difference between the front and the back is just the zip allowance. After tracing, I'll go ahead now to cut out. So guys, after cutting out my pattern, this is what it looks like. As you can see, I'm just going to label this as my back pattern. And also label this as my front pattern. So guys, this is what the skirt pattern looks like as you can see. So guys, what I'll be doing next is using my pattern to cut on my fabric. So for this tutorial, I'm making use of a cotton fabric. You can make use of a crepe depending on your choice. And you need four or four and a half depending on how full you want the gathers to be. But I'm working with four yards. So I went ahead to fold my fabric into two, placed my pattern, and I'll go ahead now to cut. So guys, after cutting out the fabric, I'll go ahead now to take out the pattern. So for the front pattern, this is what it looks like, as you can see. And for the back as well, 
or take out the pattern and then for us not to get confused it's best you take out the wrong side so i'll just label the wrong side as the back so we don't get confused so guys after taking out the wrong side what i'll be doing next is joining my front and the back together so i'll open up the front and then we'll be placing the back so we are joining the sides together so i'll place the right side of the front and the right side of the back together so go ahead place them this way so guys after placing the front and the back together i'll go ahead now to shape my skirt so from the waist i'll just shape it all the way down and i'll also do the same thing for this side as well so guys after shaping my skirt this is what it looks like next thing is to cut out the band so for the band i'm going to check what i have from the zip allowance all the way down to the other end i have 34 inches so i've cut out the band and the band is on fold as you can see if you open up the band you can see that i added paper stay to it just to give it a bit of firmness so for the band i have five inches on fold is going to be 2.5 inches so i'll go ahead now to place my band and then i'm going to be stitching with half inch all the way down to the other hand so go ahead and add your band so after adding the band to it this is what it looks like as you can see what i'll do next is to cut out fabric for the gathers now to know the amount of fabric to cut for the gathers what you need to do is to measure what you have from this point all the way down to the other points so i'm going to use my tape to measure so i placed it at that point and i'm trying to take the measurements all around so guys i'm trying to take my measurement all around and after taking the measurement i had 65 inches so my measurement from this point to the other point is 65 i'll times it times two that's to know the amount of fabric to cut but if you want yours fuller than this then you times it times three so i'm going to times mine times two that's 65 times two will give me 130 so what i cut out here is 130 and i've gone ahead to fold the down part as you can see after folding what i had was 26 inches thereabouts so guys the length of the gathers is 26 inches and then i'll go ahead now to pleat now to pleat what i'll do is take the skirt parts and then pleat from this point all the way down to the other hand following the curves so i'll place my fabric right side facing each other then i'll go ahead now to pleat so i'll pleat it little by little following the curves so go ahead pleat following the curves attach it to the fabric and then you stitch it all the way down to this point so guys after pleating and stitching this is what it looks like you can see how curvy the pleat is on the skirt right good so this is what it looks like so what i'll do next is to fold it into two then you know we added two inches for our zip allowance i'll go ahead now to attach my invisible zip on the skirt after doing that i'll stitch all the way down then weave and we are good to go with the skirt now for the top part of the dress i folded my fabric into two then i chucked the starting point which is the shoulder line i'll take my shoulder measurement divided by two which gave me eight inches and from that point i'll come down to the armhole now this is a sleeveless so i'm not going to be using nine inches i use nine inches for my armhole but because this is a sleeveless i'm going to be using 7.5 so i chuck 7.5 and i connected it into a straight line so the reason why i'm using 7.5 is because i don't want the bust area showing around that armpit so whenever you're making a sleeveless you come up to 7.5 or 8 inches next thing is to chalk from the shoulder to the waistline then from the shoulder to the length of the top which is 24 inches so i went ahead to connect my lines then the next thing i did was to take my neck measurement i'm using three and a half by three inches then i connected it with my curve ruler then i came down around the shoulder area by one inch for my shoulder slope then I connected it together. So what I did next was to check what I had at that chest line area, divided it by two, 
and came in from that point by half an inch so what i'll do next is at the chest line i'll take my bust measurement divided by four then i added two inches for sewing allowance what i did next was to use my curve ruler to curve in my armhole so guys at the waistline i took my waist measurement divided by four i chucked it down and added two inches for sewing allowance then i connected from the bust to the waist then at the length of the top i added my hip measurement divided by four so what i used there was my hip measurement so my hip measurement divided by four plus extra two inches for sewing allowance then from the waist i connected to the hip line so guys i don't want this part looking straight so i want it a bit curvy so what i will do is from this point i'll go up by 2.5 inch then from that 2.5 inch i'm just going to curve it in so i'll use my curve ruler to blend it in so we are good to go i'll go ahead now to cut out the front so guys after cutting out the front for the back i folded my fabric into two chucked two inches for my zip allowance place the front on the back then for the back neckline i'm going to be using 1.5 inch so i chucked 1.5 inch and then curved my back neckline so i'll go ahead now to cut it out so guys after cutting out the back at the waistline i will just connect it to the back that's the waistline i connected it to the back waistline then from that point i'll come in by one inch this is to eliminate zipper bulge and from that point i'll slant it all the way up so from that one inches line i slanted all the way up then from that point i also slanted all the way down so we are good to go i'll go ahead now to cut out the zip allowance and notch my zip allowance line so guys the next thing to do is to cut out facing so i folded my fabric into two and i placed my back on it this way then i went ahead to cut out the facing you also cut out the facing for the front as well so cut out your facing or if you choose to use a bias you can use a bias to pipe the neckline so i'm going ahead to attach the facing on the front and also attach the facing at the back as well and i use my emmy gum to hold it in place as you can see so this is what the back looks like as well so guys after adding the facing to the back what i'll do is just close the zip allowance area for now after closing my zip allowance area, I opened it up, placed the front and the back together, right side facing each other, stitch the shoulder by half inch. So guys, for the sleeve is like a cap sleeve. So what I have here is 7 inches by 11.5. So I added paper stay to the sleeve. I just want it to be firm. So what I'll do is fold it into two and then stitch the side using half inch. I'll do the same thing for the other sleeve. I'll fold it into two, then stitch. After stitching, I'll turn it out and give it a good press. So guys, after ironing, I'll fold it into two, then notch the middle part of the sleeve. I'll also do the same thing for the other sleeve. I'll notch the middle part of the sleeve, and then we'll be adding the sleeve to the top. So what I'll do next is to attach the sleeve. On the middle part of the shoulder so i took the sleeve that notched part placed it at the middle part of the shoulder stitch using half inch and also stitch using half inch here i'll do the same thing for the other sleeve I take the notched part place it at the middle part of the shoulder then stitch using half inch all the way down here and also all the way down here so guys after stitching this is what it looks like then for this part you can fold it in and stitch but i don't want my thread showing so what i'll be using is emmy gum so i'll use emmy gum to just fold it in because i want it to be as neat as possible so i'll use my emmy gum cut out from the emmy gum place it in and then fold it in and give it a good press i'll do the same thing for the other part after doing all of that this is what it looks like you can see how neat it is looking there is no thread showing at all so what i'll be doing next is folding the fabric together pinning them down then 
after pinning my fabric together i'll go ahead now to shape after shaping i'll open up the zip allowance area add my invisible zip and show us the end result so guys this is the final result as you can see this is what it looks like this is giving a churchy vibe which i love i'm actually going to wear this outfit to church this sunday trust me the outfit is finer in person than on video so guys i hope this tutorial was helpful please do not forget to subscribe to the channel like this video drop a comment you can make this and send it to me on instagram at so i love you guys and remain blessed bye